On this episode of On The Job, we're putting a Spider 125 to work on two different polypropylene pipe installs. First, we're going to check in on a system that's being prefabricated before being sent out to the job site. Then we'll check out a chiller and heating water pipe install that's happening across town. And we'll learn how to effectively use this Spider 125 to boost productivity on the job. Hi guys, today we're starting out in the shop where Chris here is prefabbing a system using some polypropylene pipe and the McElroy Spider 125 with universal clamping. So Chris, how's it going? Good. Just a couple more fusions and we'll be all through. That's great. So why is it you chose to use the Spider 125 for these fusions? Well, the Spider really simplifies the whole fusion process. We could do this work with more traditional socket fusion tools, but I would need at least one more person to get the job done. The spider allows me to do it all by myself. Well, that makes sense. And I see that you've got two fusions going on at once. Yeah, I actually do. While one joint is cooling, I can move on to the next joint, allowing me to get more work done in less time. Nice. Thanks a lot, Chris. Well, why don't we head on over to a job site and check in on a crew using the Spider 125 for a chiller and boiler line install. Let's go. All right, we've made it out to the job site, and I'm here with Robert Shavo. He's running some main lines from an existing boiler room through this room to a new addition on the other side of the wall. Robert, how's it going? Pretty good, Jeff. How are you? Great. So what do you have going on here? Well, let me show you. We're running some new lines from a boiler room to a, a new addition. Uh, we've got some 3-inch chiller lines right here and some 2-inch heating water lines. We've already made some fusions over here coming out of the boiler room. We had to offset around some obstacles over there. Uh, we actually did most of this on the ground. Oh, nice. So you're using some socket fusion couplings with the Spider 125 universal clamping. And as you just mentioned, you've already done some prefabbing because I see some, some couplings that are already on the end of the pipe. That's right. Uh, we did all these on the ground while we were doing the prefab. Uh, we find, you know, doing prefab, getting those fusions done on the ground actually increases productivity and reduces the amount of fusions you have to do in the air, saving time. Oh, wow, that sounds good. Let's get going. Awesome. Before Robert starts, he's going to inspect all the equipment. He'll give the machine a quick check over, making sure it's in proper working condition and as clean as possible. Since we're using the Spider 125 with universal clamping, no inserts are needed. These jaws will fit any size pipe or fitting between 63 and 125 millimeters. Once that's done, we need to make sure both the pipe end and fitting are clean. The best way to clean the pipe ends is to use a clean, lint-free, non-synthetic cloth and a manufacturer's approved rubbing alcohol. Make sure anything that could possibly contaminate the fusion is cleared from the fusion area of the pipe, both inside and out. Now that Robert has the fusion area properly cleaned, he's going to use a permanent marker and stab depth gauge to give a visual mark on the pipe of how far we need to stab the pipe into the fitting. With that done, we're ready to attach our machine to the pipe. We want to make sure that the jaw is approximately a half inch to three quarters of an inch behind the stab depth mark that Robert just made. We're going to start with the pipe first and then we'll attach it to the coupling. But first, what we want to do is point out the difference between the two jaws on this machine. Each of them have their own purpose. One is designed to hold the fitting and you can tell it apart from the other by the lip on the front edge. This is called the stop. This ensures that the fitting will be held square to the pipe. The other side doesn't have this and it's designed to help align the spider on the pipe. To attach the machine, use the knobs to open each jaw wide enough to fit around the pipe and coupling. Place the jaw around the pipe approximately a half to three quarters of an inch behind your stab depth mark. Then simply tighten the jaw until the machine doesn't move on the pipe. Make sure you hold the spider parallel with the pipe while doing this. We'll use the same procedure to attach the spider to the coupling while making sure the face of the coupling is firmly seated against the stops of the jaw. Now we'll bring the jaws together to check alignment of our pipe and fitting. We shouldn't see any visible gaps around the fitting and pipe end. If you see a gap, then adjustments to the pipe may be needed. To do this, just loosen the jaws, readjust the pipe, then re-tighten the jaws and check alignment again. Our alignment looks good here, so we're going to move on. Well, Robert, it looks like we're ready to do our fusion. Just about, Jeff. First thing, I check the temperature on my heater. I'm looking for a temperature of 500 degrees plus or minus 18. I'm going to go ahead and check on both sides just to make sure I'm getting an accurate reading. And also, I'm using a contact pyrometer. Uh, they tend to be a lot more accurate than infrared pyrometer. Since our heater is up to temp, we'll make sure it's clean by using a clean, lint-free, non-synthetic cloth to wipe it down. We normally just use a paper towel. 
Make sure to clean both sides of the heater thoroughly to help prevent contamination. The next step is to actually insert our heater, but first we need to verify our heat time. These times are conveniently located on the top of your heater kit toolbox, but double checking these times with the standard you are fusing is always a good idea. We're fusing to a DVS 2207-11, which specifies a heat soak time of 40 seconds for this three inch pipe and fitting. Hold your heater in line with the fitting and the pipe, then slowly bring the jaws together. Notice how Robert has moved his hand from the outside of the handle to the inside of the handle. Not much force is required to do this, so don't force the pipe and fitting onto the heater. Let the heat do the work. Continue bringing the pipe and the fitting onto the heater until the fitting reaches the shoulder on the heater adapter and the heater reaches the stab depth mark on the pipe. Okay, Robert, so I've got the timer ready. What are we looking for? Well, once the pipe and fitting are fully seated in the heater, we can start our heat soak time, which is 40 seconds for this pipe size. And we can go ahead and start that right now. Okay. Once our heat soak is complete, we will quickly open the jaws and remove the heater. You may have to work the heater back and forth slightly to remove it from the pipe and fitting. Just do your best not to disturb the molten material when doing this. With the heater removed, inspect the heated areas for contamination as you bring the jaws together to make the fusion. Once the pipe is fully seated into the fitting, our cool time starts. The total cool time for three inch pipe is six minutes, but since our pipe is fully supported, we can remove the spider after a quarter of that time. If your pipe and fitting are not fully supported, then they need to be left in the machine for the total time. Be sure not to put any stress on the fusion joint until the total cool time has been completed. That includes fusing anything onto the other side of the fitting or moving the pipe around. Now that our cool time is complete and the spider has been removed, we need to inspect the fusion. Robert, what are we looking for here? Jeff, we're looking for any visual gaps. Uh, we want to make sure that our pipe and fitting bead have come into contact with one another, which helps to verify that our proper stab depth has been met. So once you've made the inspection and the fusion is good, we're ready to move on to the next one, correct? Yes, sir, and everything looks good here. Great, Robert, thanks a lot. Thank you, Jeff. Well, hopefully you get the picture of just how easy it is to make socket fusions with the Spider 125 with universal clamping. Always remember, it's extremely important to follow the steps outlined in this video and always refer to the pipe manufacturer's installation recommendations to ensure proper fusion. If you have any questions or just want more information, please be sure to visit McElroy.com university to check out more videos on the fusion process. I'm Jeff Turner. We'll see you next time on the job.